Hello everybody, my name is Brady and we are back with another React video and today we're going to be checking out more geography now. So the next country we have in line is Angola, another one that I don't really know much about besides its flag. Um, when I think of Angola, the flag really comes to mind. It has this design that's very much reminiscent of the hammer and sickle, but it looks like a kind of like gear type thing. It's some something that looks vaguely mechanical and a machete, and I believe it also has like a star on it. So there's clearly some inspiration from the hammer and sickle in that, and I'm curious to how that really ties in to perhaps history with the USSR and why they would have something that has that particular imagery. I, I believe it's African, right? I, I'm, I'm not great uh, with a lot of these countries. A lot of them, I don't even know exactly where they are on the map, but I believe it's a coastal African country. So that's about my knowledge on Angola. I am hoping to learn a little bit in this one. And this series has been a lot of fun because I have been able to learn about countries that uh, I would never think to learn about. I, I know I always point that out, but I, I am actually really grateful for this because this is uh, a very fun, unique experience to get from an educational channel. So I, I'm excited to check out more. Let's get it started. You know, I once went to Denmark and I bought a sandwich that was $21. In some parts of Angola, that's actually considered a good deal. Welcome to the country that has <laughs> the world's most expensive city. Oh, really? I have I have seen pictures from Angola and I wasn't sure if it was like uh, a super nice place or not because like I see this some pictures that depict like vast poverty and then I see these other things that look like these great f vacation coastal spots but sometimes places that have one have the other uh, often it's a huge uh, separation between the upper and lower class so it, may, maybe that's the case that's that's interesting it's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your No, I just I'm still wondering that. about that sandwich. But first, let's dissect the flag. Yeah, the, the flag is what I'm most interested in right now. So this is interesting. Black Angola is actually pretty intriguing because it's one of the few countries that has a... Let, 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 can, I, can I just... Can I, can I just check something? Uh, we got 1080. It, it just looks a little... Like the rendering was a little bit blurry on this one. I, I, I wasn't sure if that was on my end or on their end, but it seems like it's on their end. Flag that tries to imitate another flag. The colors black and red. Black representing Africa, red representing blood. It, the blood of those who fought for Angola. And in the middle is the Angolan emblem. The emblem is a machete with half a cogwheel positioned in a way that somewhat imitates the old former USSR's flag of the hammer and sickle. The machete representing Very much peasantry so. and agriculture, the half cogwheel representing industry, and a star on top representing the progress of the country, all colored yellow to represent the wealth of the nation. Now you're probably wondering, why does Angola have a flag that tries to... Im so, the wealth of the nation being the, the gold, but also it is kind of glorifying kind of a working class at the same time. So, it, I, I assume it's like implying that uh, their wealth is built off of a very strong working class. So I, I would assume that... It, th there's got to be some communist history here, I, I would assume, and it would probably lean in that direction because they like to glorify uh, the fruits of working class labor. Imitate this former Soviet Union's flag? Well, we'll get into that later, but first let's talk about the political geography. In terms of its political geography, Angola is located on the western coast of the southern part of Africa, bordering the Atlantic Ocean on the west, bordered by four other countries. You would think Angola is bordered by three other countries. However, in the north, there's that one little small province called Cambinda. This Cambinda. little small sliver of land, barely larger than the size of Delaware, is so important to the Angolan country due to the fact that it produces and contains over 60% of Angola's oil reserves. Now, this oh, small little piece yeah. of land touches the Republic of Congo, making it the fourth country country that technically borders Angola. Now Africa, um, among some other uh, places, are going to, like, going forward, be so politically uh, important in the next, like, 100, 200 years, uh, like, especially because of the natural resources that are still not completely tapped into. Um, it, it's very interesting how uh, a lot of these places are likely to... Uh, be able to use their leverage against a lot of these uh, more powerful countries given their natural resources. I'd imagine Angola would probably be among that given uh, uh, 
those kinds of resources. Now, just like Albania that we studied a few weeks ago, Angola is a coastal country, but it doesn't really have many coastal islands. It only has about two. Kwanda Island in the north, which operates as a administrative town that manages the logistics of the oil companies in Angola, and Baia dos Tigres, which actually used to not even be an island. It used to be a peninsula. Oh, yeah. It's connected to the mainland by a small little thin isthmus. However, back in the 70s, the ocean completely engulfed and destroyed the isthmus and the one water pipeline that fed the one town on the island, which was named Tigres. Oh, Tigres no. used to be a fisher town. However, after that one freshwater pipeline that broke, almost overnight the entire town was evacuated and today, Bayatos Tigres is back. a ghost town. The capital of Angola is Luanda, That's which is an African architectural... It, it is very interesting, though. If you look it up, there's a lot of places uh, that are very close to being underwater. So this one is not really at all surprising that that would be a major issue. It, it's one of those things you think, oh, we don't have to worry about that stuff in our lifetime, but there are a lot of places, yes, they are going to have to worry about that in their lifetime. I believe there's a country out there that's like pretty darn close to like not existing anymore. And the big question is like, what do you do with the people? I, I don't remember exactly where that was, but it was a fascinating story. A wonder mostly built off of the oil industry money that Angola thrives off of. A large portion of their everyday amenities have actually been imported, and which is why everything is so expensive. For example, a typical sandwich could cost $26, a pair of jeans, Jeepers. $240, and don't Jeepers. be surprised to see a two to three bedroom apartment go for rent for between ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month. That's stupid. Well, it actually has a lot of different kinds of Like I'm in a place where rent is weird high. But like not even close, man. Like the, I, I, I don't relate here. I assume when you say dollars, it's the dollars I would understand. <laughs> landscapes in the north and northeast you can see a lot of tropical jungles and rainforests in the center area you can find lots of flat plateaus and savannas the further east you go you find a lot of dry hills and mountains and the further south you go along the coast you find desert lands and dry arid landscapes when you go to the mojico province and the east side you see this leaf shaped pattern from satellite images and that's actually a really intricately widely dispersed section of rivers that actually kind of looks like a leaf if you actually zoom in on these satellite images, you can possibly find native tribal towns and areas that are uncharted and unmarked on the map, but where the people still live in mud huts and thatched roof houses. Now, Angola's land is actually very rich in resources and has huge potential for land yeah. cultivation. And actually, and and it's also seemingly very diverse. It, it has a little bit of everything, which not every country has. Uh, the virtue of having so many options to work with, having forests, having uh, natural uh, oil reserves, having access to the coast, uh, having deserts. Like some people are stuck with just one of those things and you might get unlucky. They seem like they kind of hit the jackpot as far as having like a very diverse uh, array of like Biomes is is that is that the word? I, I've heard that term used before. I, I'm hoping I'm not using it incorrectly, but like yeah, different like biomes. At one point during Portuguese colonization, Angola actually used to produce almost every single major crop except for wheat and had a huge coffee, banana, and maize export sector. However, now agriculture is at a very small fraction of what it used to be. In fact, they only produce about 1% of the coffee exports that they used to prior to 1975. The That's problem sad. is that Angola went through a civil war. And during a civil war, you don't really have a lot of time to invest in your infrastructure in your country. And that either slowed down or completely halted most of the agricultural exports. Also keep in mind, landmines were planted everywhere. However, the country is trying to make it oh, God, that's as best fun. as they can. To this day, over 95% of all of the exports actually comes from oil. Now you're probably asking, why did Angola go through a civil war? What's all this stuff going on? Let's discuss that. In we, we had the flag. We have to talk about the flag. And it's very natural that that would come from a civil war. Uh, most civil wars during the... Uh, the 20th century, I'd, I'd think, okay, how is communism and or the Cold War involved? So, there we go. And demographics. 
As of 2014, Angola has about 22 million people with conservative estimates. And there are three main people groups, the Ovimbundu, the Ambundu, which by the way, Chris Tucker has a possible genealogical tie to, and the oh, that's interesting. Other minority groups exist as well that make up the remainder of the population, like the Ovambo, the Chopwe, and the Klindonga people. About 2% of the population is mestizo, or mixed, between black and white. Also about 1% okay. of the population is European, mostly Portuguese, and surprisingly, about 1% of the population is also Chinese. In the past few decades, China has actually had a huge influx of immigrants come to Angola, mostly for business. We'll discuss that in a little bit. That's I know that China is deeply interested in Africa. They understand uh, the power of the resources that they have there, so I, I'd imagine it has something to do with that. Uh, China's been investing a lot in uh, building infrastructure. That, of course, is going to... Uh, cause a lot of debt to be accrued from the Africans. So it does create a, a bit of a relationship of dependence. A lot, some people have called it like a system of colonizing through debt. It's a bit of a cynical approach, but you know, imperialism in general is kind of cynical. So like, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't question people when they take the cynical route when it comes to it, because uh, people will disappoint you. It's actually quite impressive, considering that Angola had absolutely no ties to China prior to 1975, just a few decades ago. Now, the official language of Angola is actually Portuguese, due to the fact that Angola was a Portuguese colony for over 400 years until 1975. Now, we've been discussing the people, we've been discussing a little bit of the history. Let's explain a lot more about this in the Friend Zone. Sick. Now, when it comes to friends, Angola is kind of in a weird diplomatic limbo, and it all has to do with, you guessed it, the Civil War. Long story short, Angola was kind of like the Korean War and the Vietnam War, in which it was a proxy war, in large part affected by the Cold War, where the Soviets took over one side and the Western alliances took over the other side. However, it's interesting because in this war, China actually took the side against the Soviets. That made the Angola oh. Civil War one of the few times that the U.S. and China actually fought alongside of each other for a common cause. Eventually they I mean, yeah, like just because they were both the communists doesn't mean they don't have like their uh, their disagreements. Uh, most people who have studied the Cold War know about the Sino-Soviet split, and I, I, I know less about it than I would like to, but I at least understand uh, that it happened. And I, uh, I am kind of interested in why I don't know as much about Angola's civil war as I do about uh, Korea or Vietnam. I understand Vietnam because like domestically Jeepers that that was crazy in Korea. I know a little bit about uh, le To a lesser degree it seems like Korea at least where I'm from and in my The educational system that I went through we didn't learn as much about the Korean War and but it's still on my radar. Uh, Angola, not even close. So this uh, this might not have... Either we were not as heavily involved or it was just completely left out for some reason. The MPLA one or the Soviet backed up side. However, in the 90s, Angola dropped the whole communism thing and adopted more of a U.S. and Western friendly government style. This means that Angola is caught in a weird state in which they still have this tie to the former Soviet Union nations, even though they dropped the whole communism and ideology thing, while they are still progressively making friendships with the West and the U.S., even though they spent countless years and resources fighting against them. Now, when it comes to China, China still holds on and has huge ties to Angola diplomatically and economically. In fact, to this day, Angola has just surpassed Saudi Arabia as China's number one oil exporter. And in return, oh, China has been investing cool. tons back... That's actually really impressive. Uh, like, in... Uh I don't know what the relationship between Saudi Arabia and China is. I know what the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States is. They are our oil daddies. Uh, so they, their exports are crazy. So it, anybody outdoing them in any category is impressive. So maybe Angola is more important than I uh, had anticipated in, in this conflict. Uh, I, I get framing it as a conflict it makes everything seem so sad, but you know that that is how it is. We're, we're, we we've got this rivalry with China right now. They're they're the boogeyman that uh, uh, Americans are trying to make each other afraid of right now. So it is what it is.
back into Angola. They even built an entire neighborhood called Nova Cidade de Kalimba in the south of Luanda with Kalimba. 750 apartment complexes. Unfortunately, the project didn't go so well. The apartments were too expensive, and to this day, less than 10% of the area is occupied. The rest is pretty much a ghost town. Now, in terms of their best friends, I like Angola the colors of the buildings. Brazil and Portugal their best friends. Even though Portugal Ooh. had occupied them for over 400 years, after they had received their independence, they still maintained friendly ties to their former colonizer. Brazil, which also used to be a Portuguese colony, not only shares a linguistic similarity with Angola, but also has a huge business sector that they share with Angola as well. Not only that, I could see how uh, the Portuguese uh, would have benefited a lot from uh, Angola from its geographic location. You, you think of uh, uh, they're all uh, they all have direct access to the Atlantic. It's it's a nice little triangle. I, we think of like the triangular trade or the triangle trade uh during early colonialism and and that probably would have been pretty beneficial that i don't remember exactly when he said they were first colonized but you got the portuguese you got brazil and you got angola and it's it's a nice little uh little spot on each continent and they're they're all very coastal which is fantastic for trade and the Pan portuguese were great with trade that, but they also relate with each other relationally because a large portion of the black people in Brazil have possible ties to Angola during the Portuguese slave trade. They love each other. Oh, also, yeah. Mozambique is kind of seen as would, like the little brother of Angola sense. who kind of wants to imitate him. In conclusion, Angola has got... Uh, hold on. Angola I... ...during the Portuguese slave trade. They love each other. Also, Mozambique is... But it is a little weird when you look at it here because I, I don't know how advantageous its placement in Africa is because like it is uh, I mean I guess it gives them places uh, a, a place in a slightly less accessible part of Af Africa having like this whole big part right here separating uh, Portugal and Angola so having this little this little spot here is it, that that actually might be beneficial. I was thinking like having all this in between is an obstacle, but the fact that they have this here actually uh, will work against that obstacle. You, you, you can uh, kind of just bat back and forth between these in, in a trade system between the three, which, which would be relatively smart, I think. That that's really interesting is kind of seen as like the little brother of Angola who kind of wants to imitate him. In conclusion, Angola has gone through more shifts and changes in the past 40 years than it ever has in its entire history. And it's still changing today. Angola is definitely one of those countries you'll want to keep your eyes on. Stay tuned, Antigua Ooh. and Barbuda are coming up next. Oh, that's a weird flag right there. I always judge whether or not I'm excited about it based on the flag. This is another weird one. I, I don't know if it excites me as much as the Angola one because I had questions about that. I don't know if I have as many questions about the Antigua and Barbuda thing. It just looks like some sort of mass, may, maybe hill, mountains, looking between mountains to perhaps a beach, then an ocean and a sunrise. Like I, I think that one's a little bit more... Uh, self-explanatory it's it's a picture uh just a little portrait of some like uh, somebody's view of the coast uh angola that that had some more political uh implications uh, who knows maybe there's political implications here there they seem to be everywhere all right so i enjoyed this and i am going to be continuing the geography now stuff i wonder how many more a's we have left i i always try to think and i can't i always end up blanking on how many a's are left but i'm pretty sure there's more than however many i think there are uh if i say there's five there's probably six or seven so we'll, we'll see all right Thank you guys for watching. If there's anything else you want me to be checking out, I suggest you put it in the comment section below and maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right.